In this video, we'll be learning all about source types and their function within research. So as you're doing research, you're going to be coming across three main types of sources. The first type is popular sources. Popular sources include newspapers, magazines, informational websites, and so on. They're written for anyone to read, meaning that generally speaking, um, you, don't have a very, you don't have to have a very high education level to read most newspapers. Um, for example, the Chattanooga Times Free Press is written at about a fifth grade reading level. They're widely available, right? So you can get the newspaper at the grocery store. You can go online and access the newspaper there. They're published often. So newspapers come out every day. Magazines come out weekly. They can be updated quickly. Um, so if there's news right now in Washington, D.C., chances are I'll hear about it through various news outlets within an hour. So everything can be updated very quickly in popular sources. Authors are professional journalists. The articles will have catchy headlines, right? So if you see something that has a catchy headline and it makes you want to read more, chances are the article is a popular source. And the articles themselves will be pretty short. Scholarly articles are also known as academic journals, or sometimes they're called peer-reviewed journals. They're written for scholars to read, so the language is going to be much more academic, much more jargony. Um, you probably have to be at least an undergraduate or upper-level high school student to understand a scholarly journal article. They're available via subscription only, and the subscription costs are quite high, so a lot of times that's why we rely on the library, because the library subscribes to thousands of academic journals, um, whereas individuals don't normally purchase subscriptions. They're published a lot less frequently. Most scholarly journals only come out four times a year, so that's quarterly publication. The authors are experts in the field that they're writing in, the articles will have very descriptive titles, and the articles will be very long, so they're not trying to hook you or catch you. The articles will basically just tell you exactly what the article is in the title. And they'll have really long reference lists at the end. So if the article isn't very long, like five to seven pages, um, or much longer than that, and it doesn't have a lengthy reference list, chances are it's not an actual scholarly journal article. The third type of source I'm only going to talk about briefly, um, and it's because some of your professors require that you use them. They're called trade journals. Trade journals are also known as professional magazines. They're written for people in that field to read, and they're written by practicing professionals. So what I mean by that is um, there's a magazine called American Libraries. And if you weren't a librarian, you would probably never subscribe to that or read it. There's also one called Aviator Weekly that's meant for pilots to read, and it's written by pilots. Um, professional magazines like this, trade journals, tend to be um, a lot of best practices in the field. One more example is if anybody is doing any research that has to do with higher education, there's a trade journal called the Chronicle of Higher Education that everybody who works in higher ed pretty much reads. The articles are going to be kind of medium length, and it may include a short reference list at the end. So let's dig in a little bit in the popular sources, um, mainly in the field of journalism. So Keep in mind, journalism has a much quicker turnaround for publication on websites, in newspapers, or in magazines, and it follows different editorial and sourcing standards than a scholarly publication. So you won't expect to see a reference list at the end of a newspaper article. Instead, you want to expect to see that the sources will be folded into the text of the article and then hyperlinked out in the best case scenario. Journalism has a very rigorous fact-checking and editorial process, especially before well-regarded media outlets publish articles, and especially if they're more in-depth than just a brief news release. It's important to distinguish between reporting, which is meant to inform, and editorials or opinion pieces, which are just meant to persuade. Reporting and editorials will be found in the same publication, and you have to read critically and use them accordingly. Journalism can function in a number of ways within your research paper. Um, and these are just examples. So some newspaper articles summarize a scholarly study that was done. For example, let's say there was a new chemotherapy treatment for cancer patients um, and a medical study was done. The journalism side will probably boil down that scientific study so that 
the a general public can read and understand uh, the results of that study. It might just give background information on the topic. So I've seen it over and over where newspapers do an excellent job of giving you a whole bird's eye view of a whole topic. It might just be giving a first pass at in-depth research, right? So journalists themselves often do a lot of great research where they include personal interviews, public opinion polling, and so on. So sometimes it's actual research. Or it might just be an expert giving their opinion on the topic. I would recommend that if you were going to use an opinion piece that you double check the person's credentials. Are they truly an expert in what they're talking about? I'm going to talk briefly about bias, and I recognize I can't cover bias that well in a short tutorial, but media outlets typically have a certain amount of ideological bias. So you can refer to this media bias chart. Um, it's put out by all sides. They're a research organization. These just reflect um, political leanings, right? So left being liberal and right being conservative. But basically, you have to just decide what makes sense for your topic and how you balance your perspective. Keep in mind that reporting and opinion may have different levels of bias even with the same publication. So um, in, it, this is an example here from the media bias chart. NPR News is giving a, a very center news report, right? That's their reporting. Whereas NPR opinion pieces are a little bit more leaning left. Think critically about everything you read. And if you don't know anything about the publication, read their About Us page and then Google the publication to learn more about that publication. So a little note about organizational websites. They are considered popular sources. They have an agenda, right? So all organizations have some sort of an agenda, whether it's soliciting donations or gaining members, um, lobbying, right? So make sure you understand what the organization's uh, agenda is before you use it as a source. They may present statistics and evidence that favor their agenda. So be wary, read their About Us page. A quick little bit about scholarly sources. Scholarly sources have a much longer turnaround time for publication. Studies take a really long time to set up, vet, uh, collect data, write, and publish. You may not find any scholarly articles about a very current event topic. Sometimes this process can take up to two years, right? From the time of, event, of an event to the time of a of, of true scholarly article being published. Scholarly articles go through a blind peer review process, which means that the author's names are removed and other scholars in the same field read it and make editing suggestions before it's published. This leads to really high quality writing high quality scientific evidence, and very little bias. Be mindful that scholarly journals also publish book reviews, and these don't count as scholarly articles. So if you're accessing this through the library's databases, you'll see um, that it should be labeled book review somewhere in the article's description. Scholarly articles can function in a couple of ways in your research paper. It might give background information on scholarship up until that point. So it would be found in a section called the literature review. Keep in mind, authors expect that you have a certain amount of prior knowledge. So it might not be the best place for general background information, but you can certainly see uh, information about all the different scholarly articles that came before it. And it might give you specific results and conclusions from a study done that relates to your topic that you can lean on for context in your paper. So this has been a video about the different source types you might see, digging in a little bit more into journalism and organizational websites and scholarly sources. If you have any questions at all, don't hesitate to reach out and ask the library. We're always here to help.